Hi all, I have another very impressive game to show you of Leela against Roth Trade. This engine is a UCI chess engine written in C++ by Ronald Frederick. Okay, let's see this game. Leela playing white, knight f3. So this is in the TSEC season 14, division 3, round 8.3. So Leela plays knight f3, the Reti. This is the opening book given g3 b6. So a positional start to the game. c4 now. We have c5, so it looks it's transposing into an English symmetrical variation. Knight c3, bishop b7, bishop g2, knight f6, Leela castles, bishop e7, d4. It looks as though it could head to a kind of hedgehog position now. The classic hedgehog queen takes d4 what does Leela do with hedgehogs <laughs> Rothschild castles rook d1 now we have queen c8 it's quite often in this position uh, d6 has been played here before and this looks like a very classic uh, hedgehog style position with white having a small edge queen c8 also has been used a lot in over the board chess though bishop f4 we have rook d8. e4. So at the moment, this c pawn's vulnerable. There's no point, it seems, using the d6 square when that's vulnerable. Uh, so e4. And now that d6 point is covered up. Lila retreats the queen to d3, h6, and now puts the queen on e2, a6 h4 this is a very very interesting kind of clamping move it seems at first glance what is this doing is, is this preliminary setting the conditions for further space gain on the king side at some point if the, any uh, the energetic e5 although forcing doesn't seem to give white too much it just simplifies the position it seems white might have a small edge but it has been simplified. Black's pieces are, are quite good and Black's pawn structure is quite solid. So h4, yeah. We have knight h5, the bishop drops back, and now knight d7, rook ac1, knight f6. Now again hitting the e4 pawn. Now Lila protects it with knight fd4. So protecting e4 now adequately. We have rook e8. Now space gain on the queen side, b4, taking away that c5 square potentially from a knight. Queen b8, knight b3, so pretty calm play at the moment. Knights look quite pretty together and the bishops look nice at the moment. Rook c8, bishop d4, trying to perhaps provoke tickle black into playing e5, which would weaken this d5 square if any time black plays e5. That will be a permanent d5 weakness. Black resists and hits c4 here. Lila retreats a knight to protect that. Knight e8, a3, bishop f6. And now not trading bishops, bishop e3, keeping the tension in the position. So Lila is keeping her more tactical opponent under uh, the. Uh, Kind of bind the Moroxy bind and at a distance with all these pawns and the pieces if you note are all behind the pawns at the moment apart from this pawn you could argue <laughs> rook c2 rook ac8 rook dc1 bishop a8 and now f4 so finally we do have a situation where okay we've got a couple of pawns on the on the third rank but look at White's use of pawns here. It looks very, very aggressive on both sides of the board, controlling key squares. Bishop b7, it seems black is just waiting, a bit aimless here. Now, Leela's move, bishop f2, is far from aimless, it seems. It protects h4, which means g4 is now possible, which means then g5 could be dangerous. Would this cause a panic for black? Well, we do see g6 and after g4 there is a bit of a panic reaction here black actually commits to 
to g5. This looks a little bit dicey intuitively. What if black had waited here with bishop a8? What does white actually do? Now this is just a fictional continuation. Say g5, we do get that h file to play with. And say bishop e3, bishop f3, making way for the use of the second rank if the bishops are here. And this kind of situation, it looks, yeah, I'm just giving black aimless moves just to demonstrate something. There's a threat of f6, so say black does this, then other squares are opened up like e4 and d5 potentially. And it starts to, you know, this is just a fictional line, but it seems as though the position could evolve to be very dangerous, especially if that dark square bishop defender is taken out. Black would be just getting mated potentially uh, with a form pawn there. <laughs> okay, so that's just a fictional scenario. If black does absolutely nothing, maybe Leela can build up here. There's enough to build on with that h6 pawn. So g5 is a further commitment. Now Leela reacts with e5. This looks a very, very thematic pawn break. It gets that e4 square for white for a start. d takes. Bishop takes, Queen takes, F takes, and now there's a semi-open F file as well as this beautiful looking E4 square. Uh, HG, we have Knight D E4. G takes, a bit materialistic. Queen F3 does actually threaten to take and take the Queen here. The Queen gets out of the way. And now B5, this pawn looks as though it could be dangerous in its own right. We have the queen voluntarily going to Siberia, basically, <laughs> to a7. This just does not look right, going queen a7. If Kasparov had this position, I remember Andrew Martin talking about uh, a position once with this, and he was saying if Kasparov had this position with the queen on a7, uh, he would just demolish the king's side. It would be another excuse to demolish the king's side. But it looks as though, yeah, white's been given a total free hand here. Okay, what material investment to get this position? Three, four, pawn, four pawns, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so two pawns down, but the queen's in Siberia now. If the queen had taken on c4, it seems g5, bishop g7, and in this position, white has a crushing blow, which it, it did seem to take my stockfish out of time to work out here. Uh, can you see the crushing blow? Okay, it appears to be g6 is a crushing blow in this line. For example, here, knight d5 hitting the queen, threatening knight e7. If taking check, this position is devastating after check. Knight g8 check, bringing the king out, bishop e3 checkmate, as an example. So it does seem as though, yeah, this, this is really, really dangerous, this whole line. Uh, so with uh, this position after g6, it looks super dangerous. This greedy queen takes c4. Uh, less good, bishop e3, it didn't seem so clear. For example, this position, but that might actually have some defensive resources, like sack queen, sacking the queen on the c file and reaching a, potentially an even position. That was actually threatening mate and potentially reaching... Uh, yeah, an even position. But no, with g6, it's it's crushing, it seems. So anyway, the queen just put itself, put herself in Siberia here, whilst Leela can enjoy this semi-open f file. Okay, we have bishop g7, and now getting one pawn back. f6, and now g5, Leela, not just once the queen to be in Siberia, that's happy. I think she's building up now for the dreaded form pawn. Check Tisa link up there. Form pawn, available from the King's Crusher store, is being prepared here. This pawn is destined. It has a destiny to be a form pawn, it seems. F5 is played. If, if the attempt is made to get rid of it, then check rook h2, Bishop takes g5 check. This is just devastating. Forget taking the queen. That's good as well. We can just go for a checkmate. This is just a devastating scenario. Okay, that'll be a cute finish there. 
So no, it can't be taken. And Lila has punctured that f6 square, ready for a potential form pawn. But first, knight d5. This makes it all the more spicy to play knight d5 here. So what's going on here? Well, first of all, what about knight f6 immediately? It seems this is mostly harmless after taking here. There's rook d4. And, you know, that's just very good for black crushing. Black's crushing white there. And if we look at this again, uh, with uh, black can even play knight takes f6 and be okay. This position, queen f7, black's defending, really. There's enough to defend. So knight d5 plays a pivotal role here to breaking down black's position. So why is that the case? Why this knight sack? It's impressive the knights in the center for this moment. And in fact, it's also impressive these knights are like this and the black knights are like this. In a way, we have e takes. Now, you might wonder, well, what about uh, f takes? Then the f file is dangerous after check. The knight pounces into e7 and check here. And the queen and knight are cooperating very well. Black's getting mated, checkmate. And if we look at this again, same thing with this, queen h5 and then mating. So clearly f takes e4 is a very bad mistake of knight e7. So this pesky knight is eliminated. But now Lula offers the other knight on e4. Brilliant stuff. Brilliant stuff. Offering the other knight now. <laughs> Both knights being offered to break an entry into black's king position. Knight f8 is played. If this knight is taken, then now here there's check. And in fact, this rook can cheekily slide to the second rank h2 square. And this is devastating. After, say, this rook takes g6, threatening a deadly discovered check and double check, kind of mating. For example, this is a uh, very, very strong winning. The queen, if nothing else, or mating, or both. Okay, so knight f8 is played, but now check. Bishop takes, g takes. Form pawn has arrived. Form pawn. Check t search saw. <laughs> saw. Form pawn. Okay, this is really dangerous. Queen f7 is played. If queen h7, let's look at some possibilities. Queen h7, then check and rook h2 is devastating. For example, here, that's a double check and mate. The pawn is controlling escape square g8. So yes, that is actually checkmate. Beautiful. No response there. Uh, now let's look at this again. If rook d6 then taking here and then bishop f6 this is all cra crashing through white's just absolutely winning this easily so uh this is pretty dangerous so queen f7 was played but now rook g2 check so even though leela's a piece down it's that form pawn is acting like a piece i mean the has also said this pawns around the opponent's king he's said that like to be treated like pieces almost attacking pieces is this the case here? Bishop g3, we have knight d6. Check. And now queen g4. This seems to be a very calm move in the circumstance. Is it threatening anything? There is a bit of a, a hint of alignment here of the rook and queen on this g-file. Black plays rook takes c4 here. Before we look at that, knight e4, there's rook h2 winning the queen. So there is also that threat immediately in the position as well, of course. So the queen stopping the king actually escaping from rook h2. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, just, just to follow this line, though, just to make sure for those cynical, that's just winning, absolutely winning. So rook takes c4 was played. And now white play and cash out. Can you see what Leela plays in this position? 
Okay, Queen G7 check. Takes, takes. And now King takes. We have Bishop H4 check hitting the rook. Knight G6, nasty pin actually as well. Bishop takes. And this pawn is very, very dangerous here. But the problem is, as well as this pawn being super dangerous for queening, in this position with that knight pinned, there's also an immediate rook f6 idea hitting d6 and g6. So black reacts to that. Yeah, if a takes b5, then rook f6 and scooping up another knight is a big material advantage. So knight e4, b takes. This pawn is mega dangerous. Rook a4, rook c1, threatening now. Rook c6, for example, that pinned knight is a real concern. Knight c5. We have bishop takes b6, knight d3. Rook c7 check. That pawn has lived to tell the tell. It's gone to a7 now, supported by the bishop and rook. Knight g f4. The rook comes to a2. This is bad news. d4, rook c8. White is winning further material. Lila is queening this one now knight d5 queening so it takes takes and black tries here king f5 if taking then this looks very strong <laughs> rook a6 so king f5 bishop takes d4 e takes rook d8 and now knight c3 is played. If king e5, then rook e2 check. Knight e3, rook takes e3, scoops up both knights. Thanks very much. So knight c3 is tried. Now just rook takes d4. This is a, a winning endgame position. And in fact, it was adjudicated as a win for white. The game could continue. Rook takes d3, for example. King e5, rook h3, king e4. A4, King D5, A5. And the pawn is enough. The king's cut off here. So this is an easily winning position. And the knight's gonna be have the knight has to give itself up. So that'll be very clearly winning. So let's take it to the game end. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this game. Super squishy. Element of form pawn. What more could you want? So if you enjoyed it, please click on the top left box, which should appear shortly to become a member at chessmold.net. Play against other YouTubers. You can also check the improve menu, learn from the masters, uh, YouTube order button. Uh, so for all the analysis of these games and updated analysis. Okay, comments, questions, donations, see the description, like, share, subscribe with the notif notification bell. And also the new Teespring t-shirt store, check the description. All appreciated. Thanks very much.